Can I ask you when you first vaped? What age were you? Nine. You were nine years old. And why did why did you first vape? I was friends with me and my sister went out with a girl um, who lived at the bottom of my street and she was 13 and she was using them, one of them and she had told me to do it and then I'd done it and then I completely forgot about it again and then when I went into first year is when I started doing it again but a lot more. A lo like as though you were vaping all the time, like would you vape at lunchtime, vape after yeah, school, like, before school? I would share, share vapes with friends like because we had put our money together and then keep them and then she'd hide them in her house and then bring them into school. But then first year I started getting my own. I had my own ones bringing into school. Were you able to buy them in a shop? Yeah. And is it the flavour as well? Like was it because you were kind of doing something a bit, something that you shouldn't be doing or was it actually you were enjoying it and, and the, the different flavours and stuff? stuff. The flavours. And it made you look cool if you'd done it as well. There you go. Absolutely. And like you make loads of, like, you, you, you like, talk to loads of people in school about it because you'd be walking past and they'd be like, oh, do you have a puff bar? And you'd be like, yeah, and they'd be like, come to your toilets and give me some. Wow. So yeah. it's a way to make friends and social, yeah. Yeah. social things with all of this. Um, Mary, let's talk about what actually happened that led to Sarah being in a coma. Yeah, um, it was it all happened very quickly. Um, sun, on the Sunday night, Sarah had a bit of a cough and with her having uh, asthma, it um, around about this time of year, it's normal for Sarah to get a bit chesty. So she took her inhalers and we gave her the nebulizer. So Sarah went to bed. Now she was up for the night coughing. Um, so it was just inhalers, just keeping on top of it. There was no signs of anything else. So it just seemed a normal, like maybe a chest infection starting. Um, and on the Sunday or the Monday morning, um, I got the three of them up and she said, Mum, I don't feel well. So she went back to bed and I took the two younger ones and I got them ready. I made sure I'll not be long, I'll bring these ones to school. And we got maybe about five yards, you know, and Sarah rang me, she says, Mummy, will you come back? So when I got back, um, I gave Sarah the inhalers and nebulizer again. After that, she seemed to settle for a bit. So um, I, me and her sister and brother were downstairs. Um, and then I shouted up, Sarah, just going to run to the shop, not be long. And uh, we weren't away that long when Sarah rang me and she could hardly breathe, hardly talk, saying, Mummy, I need a doctor or the hospital. At that, I, I'm only round the corner, I'll be there two seconds. Um, and I phoned her daddy as he drives to me, can you take her to the hospital? And it all just unfolded right there. Um, I went and got her sister and the older brother sorted. Um, and I'm getting a text message. I've been in with the nurse. My vitals are low. Oxygen's low. Um, I'll be here a while. And then <clears throat> within what felt like minutes, I don't even know how long it was, her daddy, you may hurry up, but she's in resus. And from resus, I got in. Uh, the doctor showed me the x-rays. One more Sarah's lung was completely not working. Um, so half her lung? One lung was just completely, so she was working with just one lung. Yeah. The other lung was doing twice the amount of work. Um, they couldn't get her oxygen levels stabled. Um, so basically, ICU, that was the only... C can you explain what you felt, the, the text that you got from Sarah? Yeah, um, before I arrived at the hospital, um, Sarah sent me a text saying, Mummy, I don't want to die without you. And that's a text nobody wants to get. Doesn't matter whether it's from a child or anybody. 